It reminds me of one story that's a little surprising where a kid once told me that he really didn't want to go mm. to a school in which the, the teachers were all very nice and very friendly and, uh, and they would offer classes that were fun and so on, but that they controlled the curriculum mm. uh, and that they decided what you were going to learn. He said, I'd rather know who my enemies are I'd rather go to a to a military school. <laughs> <laughs> Fascinating. Um, I would say, I mean, uh, uh, I can think of a particular um, student that I worked with who had a very difficult time transitioning to a learner directed um, education. You mm -hmm. know, and just it, it was difficult, and I think it it. it and it, it often does, you know, it takes a while to kind of almost unschool in a way, yeah. you know, because we're so conditioned to for certain things. And and I think the, the difficulty for this particular person was not so much that they didn't believe that people should be able to do that or, or mm. it was more about. So what so once I do that, right, once I kind of buy in and once I'm off and running. That means I have all these options. Mm. What do I do with that? And it took, and, and eventually, eventually over, it was probably two years, mm. um, eventually realized that that was part of the process. That kind of like trying some things out. Hey, yeah, I kind of like that, but you know, that's not really my thing, but it's, all, that was okay. And, and, you know, and trying that to the point where then you, you kind of dial in on maybe you know, three, five things, I don't know, mm. that you're really interested in and you really want to pursue. And I think that when I saw that transition, but during that time, it was, it wasn't easy because uh, there was a lot of self-doubt, I think. Right. There was, yeah. there was also, again, you know, the, there was a lot of community support for this person, but I think there wasn't so much support outside of the school. Mm. And I think there was some pressures coming from outside of the school community mm -hmm. that was affecting kind of how, well, I should be doing, you know, everybody yeah, else yeah. my age is doing all this. I should be doing it, you know, and it's like, so that was, but eventually, you know, came out really well on the other end of that, mm -hmm. you know, has their own business, how, you know, nice. uh, actually I think might even have multiple businesses, I think, mm. or it might be one that has like kind of offshoots of it. But anyway, you know, went to university for a couple of years, kind of mm -hmm. learned what they wanted to learn in terms of the business idea. And, and I think came away with associate's degree or something, but did, you know, it's fine. And it is a, a, a well-functioning person right now. And it's, yeah. you know, yeah. so, so I, you know, I love those stories, but again, mm -hmm. you know, being in it for while you're in it, sometimes it's hard to see that, you know, see yeah. the end game. Yeah. yeah. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg.